Today is day one of week two. And I gotta say, I could barely move because I'm still sore from last week. I haven't done tens in a long time. All of wave one, the three weeks of wave one are all 10 reps. So tens last week, uh, tens this week, and then tens next week. But that's the whole point, right? In the beginning of the program, we got tens. Want to build that muscular endurance, want to build that volume, and that's the whole philosophy behind linear programming, where you can build that up from wave to wave, and then we start decreasing the reps after you've built the endurance, so you can push yourself harder, and then you bring up the intensity. So, first wave, if you're not a high rep kind of guy, like me, it's not gonna be fun. But this is where a lot of progress is made, especially if you're like me and you stick to the ones, threes, and fives all the time, you need to do your tens. And on accessories today, we got Bulgarian squats for 15s. The other thing that's also dope is I've been shredding up too, just from all the high reps and high volume. So in terms of helping me make weight, or if you just wanna tighten up a little bit, it works both ways. You know, they always say like, the best things for you are the hardest. And it's very true. So one really cool thing about the high rep days, that's actually what our strength stack is made for. So in most endeavors, when you push the reps harder, right? They always say the last five reps of a set, that's where not only do you get the most hypertrophy, where you're gonna build the muscle, but also that's where that mental fortitude is built. Well, with our strength stack, we have beetroots, we have fenugreek, we have glycerol, all of which, which are meant to enhance the effects of creatine so you can push those extra reps. So if you think about it, like let's say normally you can only get like set to eight. If you can get to set to 10, set to 12, those extra four reps, let's say times 50 times a year, that's extra 200 reps a year you got just because you supplemented correctly. You know what I mean? Now imagine you and your competitor, if you're getting 200 extra reps a year, that's only one time a week. If you're doing that two times a week, that's 400 reps. If you're doing it for another exercise, that could be another 1,200 reps a year. You're doing more than your competitor or even yourself last year. That's how you get better. So in my opinion, proper supplement. You don't have to take our creatine. Um, I do think ours is the best. We got creatine and all the other ingredients that we uniquely formulated for stuff like that. But if you are really serious about strength and building muscle, you must take creatine and you must have your protein. So if you're on this program and you already have your favorite creatine, make sure you take that. That's how you're gonna get the best gains. For me, obviously it's gonna be our strength stack, the, the, the Jamaica punch flavor is fucking bomb as fuck too. We taste tested it like crazy. But yeah, I get that in my system. I get that crazy pump. Even though I'm powerlifting, it feels like I did a bodybuilding workout. It feels awesome. You could always count on Drake and Lil Wayne to pump you up. So you'll see the first part of the workout before we get to the obvious fun stuff is the warm up and prehab. And uh, while I was getting coached by our co-author, Jacob Ross, for this program, he always puts prehab and a really solid warm-up in before the program, as you see it in Get Lean. So we adapted that to this. And I've noticed that since I've been doing it, my muscle activation has been way better, less injuries, and my coordination, and even my mentality is way better. Because sometimes, like especially on cold days like this, you don't even really feel warm if you don't warm up until your second or third working set, you know? And that means like your first couple of sets are kind of trash sets. So now, I've been doing really, really good warm ups, and everything is timed perfectly. My body is warm, elevated, ready to get after it. And my rest of my workout is way, way better. So don't skip your warm-ups. I know it can feel boring. I know it can feel repetitive, but use it more as a mental preparation and a meditative phase where you're like, cool, I got goals to accomplish. For those of you guys that like 
like those affirmations, you know? Where you like talk to yourself in the mirror, I'm the best, I'm so fucking cool. Use this time. Like in my mind, I'm going, hitting elite, hitting elite. Gonna get that big squat, big deadlift, big bench. We got this. Imagine doing that four times a week, 16 weeks. You're gonna believe in yourself, even if you didn't before. So another good thing about the warm-ups is if you're sore, like I am, from doing the high reps, right? Getting the blood flowing actually helps you deal with some of the soreness. So some of it went away, you know, the blood moving around, moving around the lactic acid. So some days, especially in week, week one, or even the wave one, you might get up, you're like, oh, fuck. I don't know, I'm gonna hit what I'm supposed to hit today. Once you start moving around, you'll feel better. If you ever played any sports and you had Hell Week, remember how hard Hell Week is, whether it's water polo, wrestling, football, whatever, because you haven't moved all summer, usually week two of Hell Week, even though you're more sore, you actually feel a little bit better because you've been moving, so. Now our first uh, warm up is a poor man's leg extension. Like I was saying about the co-author of this program, Jacob Ross, we write all the programs together. He's a 700 pound squatter. He coaches a bunch of pro NFLers, major league baseball players, and NBA basketball players. So he has a wealth of knowledge in strength and conditioning. And he was a former PhD student before he uh, completely went straight into strength and conditioning coaching. And uh, he taught me this exercise, which I thought was really, really good for your quad activation. I know a lot of people um, aren't really quad dominant. You know, like people with short femurs, it's, it's almost like the, the, the few and the proud almost, you know? So he was like, this would be a really good one for not only quad activation, but in his athletes in injury prevention. It's called the poor man's leg extension because anybody can do it. You know, you, can just, you just need to find flat ground. So you pretty much just lean back like this. I like to start off with slower range of motion and you slowly build yourself back. You're supposed to keep your hips forward, but as you guys know, I'm not the most mobile guy and I just started doing these. So my goal is from week to week, wave to wave, I'm able to work myself all the way down. But you already feel it in the quad. So when I'm doing these, you can see I have my hands on my hips. The more advanced people will just straight up have it over their chest. But for me, I'm trying to cue myself. I'm trying to cue myself of keeping my hips forward so I can really activate my quads. Or else you just end up doing it in like this way where you're like, you technically went really far back, but you technically didn't really work the quads, you know? But I'm really trying to cue myself so I do the extra right, uh, exercises correctly. Yeah, this is uh, one of the exercises that Jacob prescribes for all of his basketball and football athletes because they always have like patella injuries and this really helps stretch out your patella tendon so that uh, it relieves pressure and how often do we like really roll out our lower quad and all that, you know? We don't. So a lot of us, whether you train or don't train, we have a lot of knee problems and this has helped cure so many. So it's good to just get it in before so that you develop like a good habit. So 16 weeks later, not only are you stronger, but you're also healthier.
So today I got 410 as my top single. I had uh, 400 last week. So all the singles start at around 80% and we slowly build them up. And in the beginning, you might be like, whoa, 80%, that feels kind of light for a single. But keep in mind, your 80% is usually your second or third last to warm up before you max out. So although in a typical training session, it might feel like light, it's technically not. And in a linear program, you want to have that space where you don't go too heavy too early. You want to build that volume, that whole body of work and repetitions that you put in to allow super compensation to occur. So I like programming at a low 80% because that's roughly RPE 5, RPE 6 for you. And then that way you slowly ramp it up and you get a chance to, without heavy weight, nail that competition squat. It's very, very important. That one I sunk way more. So now, when I'm watching my squat, I'm really, really careful because USAPL is very, very strict. So I had a side view of 225 and I thought I sunk it, you know, I was like, okay. I'm like, cool, I know exactly where it was at. And then watch. I was like, oh shit. Even if I was the judge and like, let's I scratch my face that second, I might hit the red, you know? So I was like, you know, you don't want to leave it in the judge's hands. Like if you look closely, it's like, okay, that's parallel, hip crease below the knee. And yeah, I dip a little bit but you never want the judges to go, let me think about it, you know? So that's why that one, I just, I was like, you know what, I gotta bury it. Especially when you have the chance to, you know, right now, wave one, it's like 80%-ish, 82%, 84%-ish. You have the luxury of burying it and really get that in, and that's how we programmed it. So check it out. I was like, okay, we gotta really, really bury this one. Yep. So now I'm like, okay, cool. You gotta memorize that. And then all the back offsets, when I hit my tens, make sure I hit that depth. Yeah, I was trying to sink them. Yep, that's unquestionable. Move pretty good too. Look at that. Must be the hoodie. The new City of Angels zip hoodie, you know what I'm saying? Now I got 62.5% for tens. And this is where I really gotta put my athlete hat on. No ego long game in mind because so i'm supposed to hit 312. old bart would have been like 312 sounds like 315 put three plates on but we got a strategy and like we said earlier on in this program always veer on the lighter side because you'd rather be a little bit more recovered than a little bit over fatigued in the long game of strength so i'll be hitting 310 which means i gotta put all these stupid ass weights like this and back then I would have been like, that's not Instagram worthy, that looks dumb. But I'm smart. I don't want to win these little battles. I want to win the big battle at the end. Imagine if I could squat 520 at 183 or even 540, you know, at 38. That is the real win. So I got 275, 295, 305. See how stupid this looks? But I'm going to do the work.
10 deep squats. I believe. We have to see. We always got to see. Nice. Nice. Okay, good. Woo! Two more sets. Tens, baby, baby. Oh, damn. The goal, you know, right now, I'm embarrassed if I back off weight. Looks stupid as fuck. Looks like C.T. Fletcher's curls or something. The goal is to get so strong that your back off stupid ass weights looks dope. You know the motherfuckers that are like, their back off weight is four reds? Like 470 for, or 480 for 10s, that's the goal. My last set of 10s. But the mental preparation that I need, I feel like I'm about to go in the 12th round of a boxing match. Got this shit, motherfucker. Ten perfect singles. That's the mindset. Not a set of 10, a set of one, but 10 times. God damn. I was gonna say something motivational. Like it's not about how much weight you lift, but how many times you do it. It's bullshit. It's totally about how many times you do it. Cause it'll kill your ass. Oh god damn. After squats, we got our secondary lift, which is technique focus. So we got pause, deadlifts and stiff bar, we meet again. My best friend and lover, the deadlift bar, is far all the way over there. I will not be seeing you for 16 weeks. For the next 16 weeks, you're my best friend, and we're gonna focus on pulling the slack out. So recently, I was on Juggernaut's page, and I just like sharing everyone's information if it's good information. To me, all brands are just trying to make people better lifters and stronger versions of themselves, so I love everybody. I never go like, oh, we're competing with them or whatever, or this is only our information. I think people should find information that best vibes with them. So shout outs to Chad Wesley Smith from Juggernaut. But one of the things that, one of the cues that I've never heard someone explain like this before that I really like was, in his big powerlifting days, he was like 300 something plus. So it was very hard for him to get in a good deadlift position. So his cues, unlike a lot of the more like skinnier people cues, his was get in an RDL position, 
Then immediately push the floor away from your body while trying to press your hips to the bar as fast as you can. And I actually think that doesn't just apply to like heavier set people. I think that works for anyone that has problems pulling out the slack like myself. So when you go down and you grab the RDL, it's technically like a high hip position, you know, which I like. Sometimes I'll, I'll like over pump because I'm trying to lift like my favorite lifter, but I have different leverages, you know, my anatomy is different. So I'll go like this and I end up having my hips shoot up into an RDL position. So for Chad, he was saying, just get in the RDL position already. As soon as you feel tension in the glutes, push the floor away and then hips to the bar. So I've been practicing that, and I actually like that cue a lot. Obviously that's not gonna work if you pull sumo, but I'm a big fan of trying a bunch of different cues that a bunch of people say, because you'll pick and pull from the ones that work for you, and then you'll end up getting the ones that, have you, uh, that give you the perfect form. one of my deadlift problems is uh, my initial I am pulling the slack out but I don't think I quite trust my glutes yet so I do think my knees are still slightly over the bar I think if you don't watch deadlifts that much um, you can't notice it because in terms of a lifter I think I'm probably like either a high intermediate or low advanced lifter, but my eyes are advanced. I've been in the game for so long, I've seen so much, and I've coached so many people. So, what I'm noticing is, I'm not fully getting tension in the glutes before I pull. I have a little bit, but I could be sitting back more. So I'm like, damn. I gotta like really ingrain it, really believe in it, you know? Because I've pulled with my back for so long, kind of have to like do your rewiring you know like my back wants to like it's almost as if like anytime you ever push someone your elbows are out right and then you launch people far with it and then you get in you get like a push coach and they're like bro elbows need to be down it's way more powerful and it's like right, push as hard as you can go right back to that so I'm really trying to like you know gotta trust trust the technique trust the technique so that's kind of where I'm at where my back is strong but is it the right way and am I maximizing my form? Which is why recording a video is very, very, very good. So this one, I'm gonna even slow it down a little bit. Not even worry about speed, because I'm really focused about speed too much. But really like, okay, what's a real RDL? Am I really sitting back, feeling the glutes, and then pushing the floor away? So we'll see. My first rep was my best, and my fifth one was. And I could feel it, I don't even gotta watch the video. Cause the first one, make sure I, I could feel almost my hips and the weights coordinated. So as soon as my glutes had tension, weight was coming up, I'm using that shovel leverage, you know? Cause whether you pull sumo, you see people pump, or conventional, you see people pump, it's that shovel leverage. So you want this action to come down, at the same time, 
this action comes up and we lift the dirt off the ground. I felt that in the first one and the fifth one. Some of the ones in the middle, it was more of a, almost like I deadlifted with just quads and back where I went straight up and down rather than like that. Where I'm like a, a seesaw, it was just like a leg press. So I'm happy my first and fifth one I got it right and I felt what it felt like to click. I don't even gotta watch the video. I got 14 more weeks to perfect it. I actually got this technique from JP, so shout outs to him. He was like, if you ever have trouble hitting depth in Bulgarian split squats, which may not be as important for bodybuilding, but for powerlifting, I'm doing Bulgarian split squats to strengthen my squat, not to build quads specifically, you know? So because of that, I wanna make sure I'm also strengthening my quad in a position I'm trying to hit in powerlifting. So it's important for me to break parallel and uh, JP says, elevate the front foot, because it could mean your back foot's too elevated. So I put like a little plate here, and I make sure I don't put my foot out too much, and I'm, allowed to, I'm able to allow my hips to sink lower and let my knees travel forward, and I'm able to hit like a more below parallel position. Fifteens. Let me show you guys something though. Fifteens are killer, but it's also been shredding me up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. For powerlifter, pretty good. On this program so far, been two weeks. Already lost two pounds, just from the high volume from the first couple of waves. So shred you up a little bit. That does not mean though, if you're running this program. Here's my excuse to go pound food. No, we gotta be full circle athlete. You know what I mean? Keep your protein up, try to keep your fats down, and balance your carbs based off your scale. So if you're getting heavier and you're not trying to, bump the carbs back down so you can maintain being a good athlete. For me, I'm trying to be 83 kilos, which is 183 pounds. So I gotta make sure I keep it. You know what I'm saying? You're so lame, dude. It's too many dad jokes. If you're new to doing high reps, or if you're a power lifter and you hate high reps, like me, high reps are so good for you. Because it really helps build your work capacity, not just your cardiovascular endurance, your muscular endurance. And you might be like, but I'm only gonna lift one time on meet day. Very true, which is why it's very important to lift competition specifically but to help you get there the higher your muscular endurance is the quicker you can recover which is why a lot of exercise programs regardless of what the goal is they'll have you walk 10 20 30 minutes in the non-training times to help bring up your circulation and recovery because the last thing you want is you hit a heavy squat and on heavy deadlift day you're still feeling the heavy squat which is why when we're doing stuff like this, where it's 15s in the beginning, it's very good. It helps your body recover, knows, okay, I gotta recover fast. 
Then when we start really bumping up the weights, wave three, wave four, wave five, you're ready to go, you recover fast, then boom. We, we want to see, it's linear, but we want to see almost like a J. J curve. Now it's the fun stuff. So we had our primary lift, which is the main competition focus. Secondary lift, which is our technique focus on the secondary lift. Just had our primary lift accessory, which means the first accessory that helps with the main movement, which is squat. It's pretty much breaking the squat down into one side at a time, AKA unilateral. For all you people that like science words, and then now, we got the fun bodybuilding part, which is building up the muscle that is most responsible for this lift or is lagging behind of this lift. So for example, some people are quad dominant, then good, you want your quads to be big and strong. If you're more hip dominant like me, you want your quads to be big and strong. Cause that means you don't trust your quads, you know? So that's why this exercise is good regardless of what kind of squatter you are. And we're hitting high reps too, 15. Let's go. I really try to get a good squeeze on these because you're trying to build muscle, not trying to ego lift. So I'm really squeezing, contracting, even feeling it on the way down. Yep. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Man, two more sets. If you got a leg extension machine, great. If you have a cable machine that you could go into a leg extension position, great. If not, you can still do leg extensions with bands at home. It's very easy. The main thing is, is the intention behind the movement. So we know this is a primary lift bodybuilding movement. Primary lift hypertrophy movement. We're trying to build the muscle for the primary lift. So with that in mind, don't swing. Lock your hip and knee in a position that's good so you can really flex your quads. That's what we're trying to do regardless of the machine. So I don't want to see you guys here Leaning all back, or these back and forth rockings. I don't see none of that. I want to see you focus on the quad. You already put in the work on the squat. This is how we have to train like an athlete. You know, we're not doing this for Instagram. We're doing this to put up a big squat number on meet day. So all these other little things is specifically for that. So no lead to like, oh shit. Is that the girl I'm crushing on? And you try to up your riz by <laughs> see, I know these words too, play. You think you can hide them from me? I'm trying to up your riz by doing crazy leg extensions? Nah, dude. Look at this. 10 and a 5. Every week, I'll bump it up little by little. Yep. Uh, 
I ain't even joking, okay? You might be thinking, was this fool fucking fucking around again? No, I'm training like an athlete. So what we got now is med ball taps. Some people call them Russian twists. We like to call them med ball taps because one problem that we see is once you get in the mind, of your mindset that it's a twist, and you start watching your favorite influencer again, and you see people doing things for camera, rather than for reals, you end up picking up bad habits. Like, we don't want just a, a shake, you know, with a nice smile. We want actual athletic movements. So when I say med ball tap, I'm talking about actually like tapping the ground. See how much more like full rotation you have? And because of that, we're not trying to go heavy. I would go 10 pounds and under. So if you have a med ball that's like five or 10 pounds perfect, if not, Dumbbell, kettlebell will do. So I'm gonna use this baby one right here. And one of the other reasons that I like this is you might be thinking, wait, if you're a power lifter and you want to be competition specific, shouldn't you have comp competition or more competition specific core movements, like a plank, right? Because power lifting, you're kind of static. Shouldn't it be like in a static position? You're correct, which is why we have those. We have shoulder taps on upper body days where it's like this. So not only do you warm up your shoulders, but you also hold, you hold that like barrel position, right, in a squat. But what I like about med ball taps is also, when you think about competition specific, when you unrack a heavy weight, right? What do you see? Lots of movement, trying to stabilize, right? Or when you lock out a heavy deadlift. Sometimes you see motherfuckers go like this. They're not trying to row a boat, they're trying to stabilize, which is why I like these. Because it's practicing your stabilization, moving from side to side. So that way, when you encounter something in competition that's outside of your normal wheelhouse, your wheelhouse covers it. Because I'm used to moving around like this. Versus if you're only used to planks, one day you unrack and you're like, you're like oh fuck. Why didn't I do the med ball taps like Bart told me to? You know what I mean? Another good thing about these is, for those of you guys that are trying to be professional slappers out there, you guys saw Dana White just bought a new slap league, right? What do you think this looks like? Right? So, I know there's a lot of kids out there that are like, man, my dad's a doctor, but he's lame. I wanna get slapped for a career. Here you go. You're welcome. <laughs> Done, baby, baby. There we go. Day one, week two of wave one. This is the third episode of the Get Strong series. I know I threw out a bunch of numbers that are really confusing, but the one that you want to memorize and know, today is the last day to pre-order this program. As we speak right now, I'm building the spreadsheet. I have all of the programming and the strategy set. It's just not pretty yet, and we're literally getting that made. So for those of you guys who believe in our product, even before we launch, we want to reward you guys, which is why the pre-order is 30% off. As soon as it's February 1st, goes back up to the regular price of 45 bucks. So for those of you guys who got the same goals as me this year, to be the best version, the strongest version of yourself for 2023, let's get strong together. Go to barlabrigade.com and get the Get Strong program. See you guys next week. Peace.